if my goal is to finish the race and tell as many people about Jesus as I possibly can, if your goal is to make a lot of money and retire early and like, just like live it up and live a comfortable Christian life, like we're on two totally different pages here. Um, and so for me, it's even evaluating that. <laughs> And JJ. Why are you so pumped today? I don't know. This is I think a good day. you had a little too much coffee. <gasps> no, I didn't have enough, but you just got us more caffeine, and now I'm like, zing. We're caffeinated, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, we are so pumped for today's episode. This is such a good um, episode on red flags because if I had to say one of my number one things that I looked for um, in someone that I was dating, it was this subject looking for somebody who is teachable, who is growth minded, who takes ownership. And so today we're talking about people who aren't very teachable, who don't have a growth minded attitude and who don't really take ownership very well. And we're highlighting one of my dear friends, Maddie Trout, who just it has a book that is coming out and it's the love everybody wants. And this one specifically for my ladies, right, babe? That's right. And ladies, my single gals, you need this book. I read it. I endorsed it. It's absolutely amazing. And the best part about it is that Maddie wrote it while she was single. Okay. So yes, she is married now, but she actually wrote this book before she was married. So it really, really, really applies to singleness. So I really encourage y'all to get it. All right. So before we dive in, Let's talk about Patreon. Let's talk about it. We got 71. Listen, we told you guys, it's okay that we didn't have a big bang up front. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep, keep building. building. We're grateful We're gonna for keep every building. 71. We We're love grateful. each patron. You guys mean the world to us. Yeah, and seriously. seriously, we will get to 300. That's a big number. That was our goal for end of September. So still, if you want to help us contribute to that, we'd love it. Yeah. So we love you guys, we patrons. Have Thank you so much. Yes, thank you guys so much. And we have a new bonus Patreon episode coming out soon that is a hot topic. It's, Can we give it to him? Yeah. yeah. It's what we really think about Christian celebrities like and Christian celebrity pastors and leaders. So it's going to be spicy. I got a lot to say about it and I've never shared my thoughts. So I know I'm excited. It'll be good. Yeah. Uh, a few other announcements. We have a lot going on this month. School of dating is coming back at the end of this month. And so go to join school of dating.com. You can set up a call with JJ. You actually have a call literally in like one minute. So we have to <laughs> stop recording this. So you can take that call and you can sign up for our wait list. And if you're on the wait list, you will get the lowest price that we offer that we don't offer public. So get on that wait list. It's going to be awesome. And then guess what, you guys, in just a few days on September 18th, early bird tickets for HODC go on sale. Let's go. go. <laughs> we are so pumped. We actually have a new speaker to the lineup. Her name is Mia Fields. Let's go. We're so excited about her. Uh, if you have not heard her story you guys are going to be blown away by it. It's going to be insane if you've never heard it. Oh, so we're so, so pumped. We're going to have Mia. We're going to have another speaker coming out soon. Jamal Natasha. Yeah. And we have Elise hosting. We have a lot coming up, up with it. And last year it did sell out. So make sure that if you want your tickets in, in person, that you buy them earlier than later. Because yeah. it will sell out again. And my favorite part by far and away is not just conference, but hearing the stories after stories after mm. stories of people who went out and they did planning about this time last year. Yeah. And they did Airbnbs and they did rooms together. And those are the people who by far and away had the best time at conference. Seriously, they just... 
and you will not be alone if you're coming alone. Okay. We have an app that you get access to everybody who is coming to the conference like a few weeks before the event and you can meet tons of people. You will not be alone. And about 40 to 50% of our people last year came alone. So just so you know, they did not leave alone. They did not leave without knowing a single person. You will not be alone if you come. We have an awesome hotel block and a big discount actually on a hotel that's like connected to Rocket Town, our venue in Nashville. So check it all out. We hope to see y'all there. Okay, guys, uh, we have our segment with the question from a girl in our Patreon community. Let's go. Hi, Kate and JJ. I've just listened to the episodes about the energetics of dating um, and feminine energy versus masculine energy with Rachel Sherrill. Wow, like what an eye-opening series of episodes. I know I'm like really late to the party and I wish I'd known this stuff sooner. I must admit, I started off with a subtle attitude of scepticism about this, but now I can see how my girl boss energy coupled with a slight type A personality, um, whilst it's been useful in my career, it's been like completely working against me in dating. Um, and I feel like it's been a very much um, a masculine improving energy. Um, so my question is, do you have any tips on creating a dating profile that leans more towards the feminine energy? You know, I'm, I understand that the feminine energy um, is the feeling energy but it seems like, you know, dating apps are geared more towards selling yourself, which I think lead, leans more towards the masculine energy, if I've understood, you know, the episodes correctly. Um, and when it comes to online dating, we all know that, like, a, a dating profile, your profile is, like, the first impression that you create. You know, it's all anyone has to go on as a first step, you know, before they initiate contact. So, yeah, so how do you create a good impression with your dating and pro- profile that allows that you know that feminine energy to shine through thank you very much okay first of all sarah your accent is just the best <laughs> i know and i think everyone on heart of dating that's american right now is like we just want to replay that because you just have the best voice and we just i love british accents i think we're going to take every question from now on and just convert them into a british accent i know like that would be amazing but this is a great question actually really quick want to tell you and anybody listening to check out jg jj's man's minisode i can't talk right now should we try that again jj's <laughs> men's minisode <laughs> last friday um i'm an independent woman that don't need no man it's a really good episode that i think complements your question um and also just as a side note we teach about this extensively in school of dating and we help everybody set up their profiles um, men and women in the class and we have like all these texting scripts which really help people lean more into the feminine uh so your question is awesome and one thing that i would say is the feminine energy when you're leaning into your feminine you have to remove any proving energy which is hard because as you mentioned, dating profiles are all about like putting your best foot forward and trying to sell yourself. And so you wanna be authentically yourself on that profile. I would just say when you are answering prompts, because I think prompts are the biggest place where you can add more feminine energy flair into your dating profile. I would say in those prompts, you know, you're not putting something like, Uh, if you're not interested in a relationship, don't bother messaging me, period. Because while that may be true, that's a very masculine way um, and harsh way and almost feeling controlling and blunt way of saying, communicating your value. So instead you can say, um, it feels good to hear more than just a hi from a man. And so if you say something like that in your profile, that's more inviting, that's more open, that's showing like, hey, you're not here to just like have a pen pal conversation. And so I think really think like not just putting a list of I like uh, I like Sunday brunch and going to church and reading books and watching a Netflix show and drinking coffee and da, 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 da. like we, we put lists of all the things we like instead of that lean into sharing more details of who you are and what you like because um, lists can come across again very blunt. So those are just a few basic 
uh, tips for your profile. We do give a whole lot of other specific tips when you're in messages with somebody and how to really be feminine in your messaging and actually how you can be really powerful in communicating and not having texting pen pal buddies. So um, I hope that helps and you had a great question. And thanks again, because we just loved hearing your voice. (laughs) All right, let's get into the episode today with Maddie. All right, we got Maddie Pruitt Trout in the house today. What's up, Maddie? (laughs) <laughs> What's up? This feels like we're just having coffee, hanging out at your house. I I'm so it. excited for this. I am too, babe. Are you here in the house too? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of sad that we don't have Grant here. Like, it's a very hyper-feminine episode today. <laughs> but we'll survive, okay? I'll yes. just stick up for the men be like, you know, talking in a deep voice and ask <laughs> dumb, manly questions. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also, babe, you uh, you didn't get the pink memo. I know. This is like a whole Barbie theme right here. You guys are really running with it. No, you know why we're wearing pink? Why? It's for Maddie's book. Hey. Okay. <laughs> also, my favorite color of all time. But I'm so pumped for your book, Maddie. The love everybody wants. I had the honor to read it early, and it's so good. Like, I'm telling you, when I was single, this is the book I wish I had before, like, I even married JJ, you know, like this is the book that I, I was reading it and I was like, man, this is me in so many eras of my life. Like, it's so good. So um, first of all, let's talk about it. The love everybody wants. Um, tell us about it because my people need it right away. <laughs> oh, you're so kind. And honestly, it's funny because Truly, I started writing this book in singleness. So it was truly therapy to myself. I was like writing this book to make myself like to speak truth to myself when I was not feeling it. And I was struggling with singleness and feeling on the sidelines and just being like, God, why is everybody else getting what I want? It feels so unfair. Uh, Wrestling with questions like what's wrong with me? Like, am I hard to love? You know, what's going on? Am I enough? Um, you know, and just being at that place of, of just longing for more, but not seeing it. And, um, man, I just remember having this moment with the Lord and I was so frustrated with him and I was like, this feels so unfair. Like, where's my spouse? And I just remember he spoke to me and he was like, Maddie, you have been looking for all the right things, just in all the wrong places. And that desire that you have for marriage and to find a spouse is good and it's awesome. But like, you're just putting that above me and you're trying to find this divinity in humanity. You're trying to find this radical supernatural love in another human. And you're only going to be able to find that in me. And uh, man, that moment really changed so much for me. And just like, my whole perspective on finding this lasting love and finding contentment and wholeness um, and completion. And so that began kind of the journey for me, but that's when I actually started writing this book. And so it's cool because the beginning of this book was written from that perspective all the way transformed into now being married. I finished the manuscript after two months of being married. (laughs) So I truly walked through like discontentment, singleness to singleness and thriving and loving singleness, not wanting to get find my person, um, to then finding grant, dating grant, engagement, marriage. Um, so it's really by the grace of God that I've been able to write a book on relationships and truly walk through all the different seasons of life. Um, but man, I just realized in that moment when God spoke that to me, that his love is the only love that can truly satisfy and complete us. And then it's from that foundation that all other things fell into place. Once my relationship with God was my highest priority, it felt like all my other relationships just become became healthier and stronger. Um, and so, man, that was just such a, a shift for me. But the inspiration behind this book is based on Matthew 22, uh, 35 through 39, which is the two greatest commandments, um, to love the Lord, your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and so I feel like our, our culture has really overcomplicated this idea of love. And I really wanted to bring my readers back to this place of like, actually, it's pretty simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. And God gives us, you know, the three loves and also the order of those loves. 
loves. Um, and so I really dissect that in my book and just talk about the importance of God's love being the foundation. And then from that place, really learning how to love ourselves well, because if we don't love ourselves and value ourselves um, and see ourselves the way that God sees us, it's going to be really easy for us to enter into relationships from this place of lack and clinging to someone else for dependence, um, to complete us, to satisfy us. Um, And so once those two relationships are strong and healthy, then we're able to come to this place where we're ready um, for a healthy, thriving, holy um, relationship with, with someone else. So good, girl. And what you're saying, actually, you know, we're in the season on red flags and we'll get into our topic. But as you were saying this, it just came to my mind, literally, that actually being single and putting your identity more in that desire for marriage than your desire to know Christ is actually a really big red flag. And I think if people are honest with themselves, there are a lot of people and myself included, like you, Maddie, who do that. You know, it's like, I love God, but I really want this more, you know, like if we're really honest, we may not like say that out loud, like that we want marriage more than we want God, but like our actions, the way we're thinking, the way we're living, the kind of relationships we're in, the people we're dating are actually showing that our priority is I find somebody and it happened ASAP Mm -hmm. and it make me feel full and whole and worthy Because I'm not getting that truly from over here. And that is actually a massive red flag. Like, it really is. No, it is. And and it's so easy to spot, I think. Like, Mm. you guys tell me, if a guy came to you, and I know from a guy's perspective, if I was on that first date, it is almost screaming through every sentence, every story, everything they look at you to be their god right Mm. yeah that almost and i would almost say it's almost a desperate energy because it's a desperate need oh my gosh yes so true and that's why it's so important the healthiest and strongest relationships are that way before they ever begin so it's two healthy and strong individuals you know when i when i went on my first date with grant i was like this dude is special and i'm gonna marry him and it wasn't like this crazy like yes i was attracted to him yes like whatever like he's awesome. He's tall. He's outgoing, whatever, like superficial (laughs) things, but it was, he's so handsome. But at the same time, it was like, okay, no, Uh, all that aside, I was blown away by his love for Jesus. I was blown away by his confidence. Like I was blown away by the way he loved and served people, even like the waiter that we would be interacting with. And so I think that's so true. I do think it's so easy to spot, but man, we overlook it a lot of times because we're like so desperate. Like you said, we're like blinded, which I know we'll kind of get into this more talking about red flags, but we're so blinded by, you know, that desperation for love or that wanting for love that we just settle for less than God's best because we're, we're desperate and we're not finding that, like you said, Kate, in, in our relationship with the Lord. So I, I so agree. That's such a, like, that's probably, I mean, that's probably the biggest red flag. I'm like, if they, if they are not in a relationship with Jesus and wholeheartedly seeking that and finding completion and satisfaction in that first and foremost, I'm like, man, that needs to be our number one. <laughs> like the number one. Yeah, absolutely. Over and over and over. Yeah. And like when I met JJ, that was like the thing that set him apart because he was younger and not my type. You know, like so many things I was like, this is not my jam, the blue hair, all the stuff when we first met. But when I did, <laughs> blue I'm hair. like, it's crazy. The earring, the blue hair, the all of it was just wild. But when I got to know him, I was like, wow, he like, love Jesus. I remember the first time we actually went to church together, like, because we were long distance. So the first time we went to church together, we were in the car after and you just started crying. You're like, God loves you and loves us so much. And just seeing him cry, talking about God's love, I was like, I started crying. And I was like, this man is so like pure before the Lord. Like, like his love is so pure and it's so beautiful. And I just thought of that moment randomly right now, but like that is more attractive than anything. So who cares about the blue hair? You know what I mean? Like (laughs) he's like, let's bring it back. So (laughs) that means I can bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, so you're giving me a free pass. She's like, absolutely not. (laughs) That's what I heard. Maddie, you heard it, right? (laughs) I think you should dye it pink. It only makes sense. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Babe, what do you think? For you, I would do it. (laughs) 
that. Yeah, I would you do would? it. You would? Yeah, I would do it. <laughs> that could be fun. I, yeah, I mean, it, it can't be hot pink. It's got to be like that kind of like, you know. A subtle. The yeah, subtle, exactly. like Maddie's color right now <laughs> exactly. that's going on. Exactly. If you guys are watching the video. No, I'm down. If they showed up to a first date with pink hair, would that be a red flag for you too? <laughs> um, I would definitely I mean, say this is interesting. <laughs> what would you say, Maddie? <laughs> I would say, I mean, okay, like you said, it's definitely not my type. <laughs> um, so I would definitely have to look past that and be like, what's actually underneath. Right. And really, and really seek to know like the heart and the character. And I mean, ultimately that's, what's going to like matter to me is like, okay, love for Jesus personality. Like, can we be best friends? Yeah. You know, can we laugh together? And all the things. And then I'd probably, you know, a few months in be like, so are you planning on keeping that pink hair? That's exactly, <laughs> exactly what she what did, I did. Yep. Yep. I like, that's how it works. I literally sat him down. I was like, so how important is style to you? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And, like, it went, and it went completely over my head too. I was like, I mean, not that important, but I had no idea that she was like, I was like, good, wonderful. Good. Yeah. This is great. Little evil mastermind over here. I was like, um, so you're saying we can amazing. go to the mall and like get a new wardrobe he's like yeah <laughs> dye your hair while we're at it yeah yeah throw oh that my in gosh there. well well okay this is so great i love that we're already starting with some different red flags me too all right so we are talking about red flags i love that we are already covered a few and in maddie in chapter six of your book you have so many great chapters um but in chapter six you actually talk about some really big red flags so many of them and one that you highlighted i just think is so big and i think we're just gonna like blow that one up a little bit today um and you talk about not being teachable or not having a growth mindset. Ooh, girl, I was like, yes, a hundred percent. Like, man, huge deal over here, right? I mean, and that is like one of my top values, actually. I did this like later in life, but like I actually did an exercise where I thought of what are my top values? Faith, obviously, but growth is actually my second top value. And I realized how important it was for me because I'm so growth minded to be with somebody who is just as growth minded, who wants to work on themselves. Um, so real quick, I have a bunch of questions to ask you, but um, I'm just going to lay the framework of what growth minded really means. Uh, because I think some people are like, oh, yeah, growth minded. I'm totally that like, I'm about that. That sounds great. It's like almost buzzwords today, like where you're like, oh, yeah, I love growth. I'm into therapy. I'm into this like and I'm like, but are you really let's actually talk about are you really growth minded? Are you really teachable? So being growth minded is where you see problems as a means to grow and learn. You're not afraid of problems and conflict, actually, in relationship. You see it as, okay, this is an opportunity to grow and learn. Growth-minded people also believe that basic abilities, basically anything in life, is done through hard work. So they know it's going to take hard work to grow as a human being. That's just part of the equation. A growth mindset is going to say, you know, this might be hard, but what can I learn from this? And they may also say, this is tough. What resources can I reach out to? Who can I reach out to to help me in this situation? Now let's talk about the opposite, a fixed mindset type of person, okay? Fixed mindset people, they feel like they are just born without all the things that they need, okay? And they may not say that, but they they kind of could become complacent to like, this is just the way I am. You'll hear a lot of people saying, that's just the way I am. I'm just bad at math. Or especially when it yep. comes to dating, my favorite one of all time that many guys say are, I'm just not a good planner. That's just not me. Oh, I'm not gonna- My husband. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just not a good planner. But like, instead of saying like, you can say that, but it's like a period dot end of sentence. I'm not a good planner. And therefore I am not going to plan and I'm not going to try right. to learn to, to pursue you well in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. It also, they also typically have that mindset of like, yes, I can do this like all in or all out. Like yes or no, I, this is never going to happen for me. It's like that all in all out. Um, and then the last thing, I think this is a big one for fixed mindset people is they feel like feedback is an attack and they get defensive versus a growth minded person are going to, is going to say, 
well, thank you so much for this feedback. I know that you love and care for me. That was hard to hear, um, but I really appreciate you sharing that with me, you know, versus a fixed mindset is like, wow, you're just attacking me or you just don't get me. Right. And they get really defensive. Um, so, okay. I want to give that brief overview, but Maddie, in your book, you talk about so many different relationships that you had which is so good. Um, I loved like reading about all of this. And I love how you were kind to some of these guys. You were awesome, you know, like, and different situations. It's hard to do that. I so was you, boy crazy, guys. Yeah. I was boy crazy. <laughs> oh, but I mean, and I'm sure a lot of people listening are that way too. But, you know, growth mindedness is a huge deal. So how in different relationships, as you were learning in your journey, how did you spot people men that weren't growth minded like how did you figure that out man that's so good and honestly like it, it's really cool as we're talking about these red flags one thing i do want to just start off by saying um is it is something to evaluate in someone else but it's also something to evaluate in yourself and i think a lot of times we don't want to evaluate them in ourselves and i think sometimes i am prone to have a fixed you know mindset i think i'm prone to get defensive and be like no i know best you know and it's been so helpful to have the people in my life community people around me to remind me maddie you you have some you have some blind spots you got some areas we need to work on and let's pray over them and let's like turn to god's word and what does god's words say, you know? And so, um, I do want to just say that as we're talking about red flags, this is also not me saying that I have never in my life had a red flag right. or that I have it or that That's I have it all good. figured out because I, <laughs> like we just talked about, I was boy crazy and I had some areas that I needed to grow in and God, praise God, got a hold of my, a hold of my heart. Um, so That's back great. to your question, uh, to be honest, I mean, gosh, nothing turns me off more than an apathetic and arrogant spirit. Yes. Um, and you kind of spoke to this, but I do think these are the two things um, that stand in the way of someone being willing to grow and change. Mm. Um, either they are too prideful to admit that they need to fix something in their life or grow in an area, um, or they're too lazy to put in the effort to change and to grow. And I think both of those things are just extremely unattractive and just huge red flags. Um, but man, I always have seen in my own life, like you can work with a teachable and humble spirit. <laughs> um, I, I grew up playing sports. I grew up playing basketball and I would always say like, I would night and day always choose the teammate who isn't necessarily this like rock star of a player. Who's like this LeBron James who scores 50 points. Um, but and who's like cocky and lazy, but rather someone who is hardworking, who's teachable, who wants to keep getting better, who encourages the people around them. And I would just say like that goes into even life, like into romantic relationships, into a marriage, like the same as in relationships, we're teammates and we're going after the same goal here. And if I have a crappy teammate, um, someone who accepts mediocrity and is lazy and effort or someone who's prideful and full of themselves, it's going to be really hard um, to have a thriving, healthy and strong lasting relationship. And the same goes for me. Um, you know, if I'm looking for that, like I said, in someone else, I better make sure I'm giving that to. And so I would say in my past relationships, there were definitely uh, some people who you kind of alluded to this, but had the mindset of like, this is just how I am, right. take it or leave it. And uh, man, I just don't believe in that, nor am I even suggesting, you know, I guess another side of what people could argue um, to like change people. Uh, I don't think we get into a relationship hoping that the person will change or to change them into what we want them to be. Um, but I just don't believe in staying the same, this mindset of like, this is just how I am. I think as believers, as Christians, as even just humans, like we should be wanting to grow and get better every single day. Um, and so I need a partner who is someone who's going to have that same goal and mindset. Um, and so obviously you know, the relationships in my past, they didn't, they didn't end well. And, you know, there was a reason for that. And I do think that this was a major factor in that. This was one of the major red flags that I found, um, even in my own life of things I needed to work on. And I was a little stubborn and prideful that God had to really work out of my heart. And when I went on my first date with Grant, this was one of the first things that I saw in him that he had such a humility and just hunger to grow and get better every single day. Um, and because of that, like he is such a great leader. He is quick to admit when he's wrong. He is quick to ask for 
for forgiveness. He is quick to initiate a, a challenging, you know, conversation of, Hey, here's an area, Maddie, that I see in your life that you've been blind to. And this is an area you could grow in. Um, and he's also so easy to, you know, for me to confront him and have that same conversation, um, because of his humility and because of his heart posture to continue to want to grow. And so in order for relationships to be all that they were meant to be and made to be, it takes humility. It takes an awareness and a vulnerability to say like, I don't, I don't have it all figured out. Like I'm learning, um, I'm growing, but I'm committed to letting God refine me and convict me. And because of that, I'm going to be committed to growing and getting better every Every single day. Um, and that to me is so attractive, <laughs> not this like spirit of, I don't need to change. Like, this is how I am deal with it, which I think a lot of times we settle for. Um, but I think actually having, finding someone who has the spirit that says like, I want to grow and get better. I'm teachable. I'm humble. Um, and I want to be the best that, that God has called me to be. Yeah. That's so good. Wow. Yeah, it, isn't godly humility so attractive? It's so attractive. Just in friendship, relationship, family, wife, marriage, it like, doesn't matter. Godly humility of what you just described, mm-hmm. like especially with, with Grant, for example, those are the people that you just want to be around in your life. Yeah. Like they, they bring life. And they also challenge you. I feel like, Maddie, you know, you tell me, the best part about being around a humble person is they challenge you to be more yeah, humble exactly. yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, truly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, another thing I'm just curious because I'm sure in your dating life, like, and I, you speak to some of this in your book too, like, I'm sure you've had guys that were like, okay, Maddie, like, you know what? I'm going to change. I'm going to do something different. Like, I thank you for bringing this up. I'm going to change because I. this was me too. I would bring stuff up and as you know, I do think we do have a responsibility to say things kindly, like in love, like there's a way to say like, Hey, I think there's an area like the way Grant say it, said it to you, like, Hey, this is an area, like, I love you, but I think this is an area you may have been blind to, you know? And I think there's a way to say it that, you know, that person is still for you and they love you versus saying, Hey, you suck at this. You need to change immediately. The other person's like, Oh my gosh, I'm on the defensive. I feel really small. So we do have a responsibility to like share things with people in a love and kindness. But let's say you do that. And then the guy's like, or girl, you know, for guys listening is like, awesome. You know what? I, I am going to change that. That's really great that you point that out. Um, but then nothing happens. Like, how do you put it to the test? Like, you're like, awesome. They're saying all the things I want to hear. This is great. You know what I mean? Did you have those situations happen? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. And I, I, this is actually another red flag that I talk about in my book of if their, if their behavior does not follow their belief, that is a red flag. Um, a person's behavior should always follow their beliefs. So if they say they love God, their life and the fruit of their life will show that. Um, if they say they value purity, their actions and behaviors will reflect that. If they say they value you, their behavior will reflect that from how they talk to you, serve you, respect you. And so, man, one thing I just say in my in my book just so plainly is sometimes, man, but the behavior is the only answer we need. When someone shows you um, who they are, like believe them. Yes. I love <laughs> um, that quote that from is, your book. That's my fa- uh, one of my favorites. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. I was like, amen, girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we try to justify it. Yes. We're like, it's so funny to me. I've done this. So I'm not hating on anybody who's done this because I did this, yes. but I would be like, God, show me, you know, like, are they the one yeah. help me show me? God's like, uh, hello. I'm trying to show you, look at their behavior. <laughs> like just pay attention to their patterns. Like, hello. It's like the dashboard of the car is like filled with like emergency lights and check engine lights. And you're like, God, <laughs> I can't, I can't see. see. Where's my I can't sign? see what's going on. Man, it's so true. And that's why, so the chapter is actually, my book of my book is called Love is Blind. And then the subtitle is Red Flag Alert. So I talk about the red flags, but really the whole idea is like so many times we're just blind to what we, we see what we want to see, right? Like we don't, um, sometimes we aren't led by conviction and, and with godly clarity because we allow our feelings to lead us. And we allow, um, you know, just, we get wrapped up in the moment, but man, I'm such a big believer in action over intention. Um, cause anybody, 
like anybody can have good intentions. I'm like, come on, literally, I, I guarantee you like terrorists have had good intentions. Um, but if those good intentions aren't followed with good actions, then they're meaningless, they're pointless. And so someone led by a strong belief system and convictions is someone worth following. And so if they don't have a strong belief system and their actions aren't following their language, their words and what they say they believe in, I would not trust them. I would not follow them. I would not be in a relationship with them. Um, and so that is, I mean, I'll take a hard stand on that, but I'm also someone who's learned from that. Like I have, I have failed in that. And I've also now succeeded in that and following that practice. And man, it's so worth it. Like following someone and being in a relationship with someone who is led by their convictions, not led by culture, not led by feelings. Um, but someone who's like, no, I know what God's word says. I know who I am in Christ and I'm going to stick to that. And I'm going to, I'm going to lead you in that. Um, it's so, so important, but I would speak to like the question you asked, just some, some really practical things. Cause I know sometimes I'd hear these things and I'd be like, great, but how do I actually do that? Um, some practical things to, you know, look out for when you're kind of determining that one thing I would say is just like really pay attention to the person's patterns. Like what are they consistently doing? What are they doing right now? Um, not what are they saying they're going to do in the future? Uh, that is a fantasy that is not a reality. And so what are they doing right now and paying attention to like who they consistently are. Um, two, I would say peace. Like what is just like that gut feeling? What is that feeling in your heart and that spirit in your spirit as you're praying about it, as you're talking with like your mentor accountability? Um, what, what do you feel? Do you feel a restlessness, a, a lack of peace? Do you feel like you're having to constantly justify like why you're with this person? Mm. Um, so patterns, peace, I, I'd say people like the people around them, mm. um, who do they surround themselves with? Like, who are they doing life with? Because that's going to tell you a lot about who they're going to become yeah. and who they, who they say they're going to become. Yeah. It, it's going to tell you a lot. Oh, you know, you just brought up literally one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's from John Mark Comer, which is, who are you becoming by the things you're doing? And mm. I love asking that to myself. Like, who am I becoming by the things I'm doing? Like outside of just my ministry, like who, what I'm doing outside of that, you know, the things that people yeah. can't see. There's a great book out there called anonymous, like talking about the 29 years oh, of Jesus. So like, yes. Like before <laughs> so his three years of ministry, like who are you behind closed doors who are you when nobody else is looking mm -hmm. and I think it is hard sometimes in dating to see that initially which is why getting to know someone through time and seeing them through various facets like who are the people they hang out with if they're not bringing you around those people and you don't know them or they don't have good quality people in their life that is a red flag like who are they growing from you know like talking about growth mindset like who are they learning from and growing from is it just from their that one message on a Sunday, which I mean is great if they're going to church, but uh, it should be more than that. It should be through their devotionals. It should be through mentorship. It th should be through older, wiser people in their life. It should be even through their peers who are hopefully leading them in a healthy direction. Well, and I think the definition of humility in relationships <laughs> is because I even had this being the top of the fountain mm. versus having people that you are submitted to. Oh, you have yeah. older, wiser people because you, you're humble enough to admit that you need that, yes. right? Being surrounded by two, three, four guys or girls who you have, you always have the microphone in their life, but not vice versa. And even then they might even have a microphone in your life, but all three of us here know, like they don't have the life experience or wisdom that we need. They're going to be our cheerleader. They're going to be a supporter and we're grateful for them, but they're mm -hmm. not maybe going to be as blunt with us, right? They're not going to to say some things that we need to hear that kind of prick our heart and spirit. And I think it's just humility and that growth mindset saying, no, I don't want to just be supported. I don't want to have a cheerleader. I want someone who's going to challenge me. You think about that football coach, that basketball coach, right? They were not there to be your friend, mm. right? They were your coach first. My best coaches were my coaches first. Yeah. Maybe we had a relationship out of that, but not really. Yeah, it's so true, babe. Okay, guys, so who else is pumped that it's basically fall? I mean, I'm in California, it doesn't feel like fall, but I am still into all the fall themed things right now, specifically fall meals. 
And another thing about fall is that your schedule is typically pretty busy. Anybody else? That's Is that just me? No, I don't think that's just me. And so usually a fall schedule doesn't always leave you with all this time to spare. And so that's why I love HelloFresh because with HelloFresh, you don't need to spend all this time just picking out ingredients, going grocery shopping, and then making long dinners um, or spending all this time cooking. Instead, with their quick and easy recipes and 15 minute meals, you can get a tasty dinner on the table and less time that it takes you to get takeout or delivery. That's the way I wanna live, okay? When you use HelloFresh, you're also getting super top-notch products since it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. So I'm super pumped for all their fall recipes this fall. Um, There's just so many fun fall themes, you know, like you have butternut squash and we have sweet potato and just so many things that make the fall so yummy and cozy. And I love HelloFresh because it saves me so much time and JJ, who really cooks all the meals in our house, so much time making meals. Another thing is that I also love Green Chef and now HelloFresh owns Green Chef, so I love switching between the two brands. It makes it super, super easy. So if you guys wanna try out HelloFresh, you can go to hellofresh.com slash 50 heart of dating and use the code 50 heart of dating for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months, y'all, okay? So again, you go to hellofresh.com slash 50 heart of dating and use the code 50 heart of dating for 50% off plus 15% off for the next two months. Let's flip and go. Maddie, this also brings up, and we kind of touched on how a lot of people date potential. And I wanted to bring up a concept you brought up in your book about just like fake love and kind of like we're inclined sometimes to want like something that maybe looks shiny and nice. Like maybe it's, I'm literally just going to say it. Maybe I'm dating someone who is a worship pastor, but, and behind, and so that looks good. Okay. I am dating this worship pastor. I look great. I'm with this person. We're like the key couple at church. Um, But behind closed doors, there's not like growth mindedness. There's not that teachability. There's lots of conflict without like learning, growing and seeking accountability. And you say literally this in your book, we weren't made to settle for fake. We were made for a real love, a lasting love. And I really actually think that dating potential or dating like this virgin that you think is like looks pretty is fake like is dating fake because you're not dating the reality of this person you're dating like this version that you've fantasized in your mind or this version that you think will look good to everybody else but meanwhile you're like imploding on the inside so I just want to talk about that concept for a second because I think a lot of people do that and I do see a lot of women especially do that I mean you can speak to the guys but yeah. What do you think about that? It's so good. I'm like, you just spit some fire things in there. Um, I'm like, where to even go? No, I think that's, that's so good. And man, one of the, one of the challenging questions, um, that I would ask myself and I wrote about is just, man, ask yourself, like if he isn't doing it now or she, um, what makes you think they'll do it later? Yeah. Yes. Um, if they're not doing it right now, why would you think they will do it later? If they're not protecting and pursuing purity right now, why do you think that's going to change in marriage or in a dating relationship? Um, and I think that those are really hard, but good questions to ask yourself, because I think we do like to go to the rose colored glasses and see things through, um, a hopeful lens, which is not necessarily always a bad thing, but I think it is when it's your, your destiny on the line and your relationship with the Lord on the line. Um, and so I think asking yourself that question is a really good start. And like you said, um, and kind of alluded to and what we've talked to is if you're dating someone for who they could possibly maybe one day be, you are dating a fantasy. I mean, you're, you're dating a made up, not real life situation. And God just has so much more in store for you. God has so much more. He can't bless fake. Like he can't bless fake. He's only going to be able to bless real. Um, cause that's who he is. And so man, just, just really asking yourself the hard and challenging situations, um, or questions is going to be really important for the situation that you may find yourself in. Um, 
But I do think that there, I think what's like can be hard and contradicting is, you know, we just talked about growth, right? And now we're talking about like potential and and don't settle. And the last thing I would want anyone to hear is that, you know, like, like there's going to be, we're imperfect people, right? And so there's going to still be like weaknesses that we need to work on and things that we need to overcome and deal with. And I do want, you know, everyone listening to this doesn't mean that like Grant and I entered our relationship perfect. (laughs) We're not perfect. Um, Our relationship was built on Jesus, who is perfect, but we are not perfect. And so there were definitely still some weaknesses and things that both of us needed to work on, but I didn't come into the relationship half a person. He didn't come into the relationship half a person, and neither of us were looking for completion, and neither of us were looking to change the other person, fix the other person, um, or hoping that, oh, one day it will get better. And I've done that before, and I've seen a lot of people do that, clinging to this, like, maybe one day it'll get better right. Right. excuses like this is just like how they are this right. is just like how guys are um mm. but gosh i just th- there's just there's no peace in that there's no security in that there's no blessing in that and so man until i could get to the point where i was like lord i can't i can't do this anymore um and it took me it was probably like a year before i started dating grant where i like finally got to that point where mm. i was like i'm tired i'm like i wiped my hands clean and i was like i I am tired of, you know, trying to date these guys who maybe like love God and have a cross necklace, but like, they're not leading, you know, they're not leading themselves. Well, they're not leading others. Well, they're like, they're trying to lean more towards like pushing the boundaries than pursuing purity. Um, they're leaning more towards like, you know, trying to cross the line rather than staying as far away from the line as they can. And man, I just wanted to, I wanted a man who, who man just wholeheartedly was like, like, I want to please and honor God with my life, um, which did not mean that he was perfect, but it meant that he was teachable and willing to grow and, um, and that he had people speaking into his life. Like he had that mentorship that you were just talking about JJ. He had that, you know, accountability he had, um, just the vulnerability and the authenticity of being like, you know, he was confessing to his friends at the thought level of like, Hey, I had this thought, let me confess to you. Um, but yeah, I think that's just such an important thing to, to point out. Cause I definitely don't want people to think that it's like, Hey, be, you have to be perfect. You to have it all together. Um, but man, when, when we say potential, we mean like the really important things like, like character, faith and convictions, values, beliefs, friendship. Like if you vibe, like those are things that you don't settle for or make an excuse for of like, maybe one day, you know, his faith or convictions will change or get right. better. You 100%. know, I think those are really, really important things. Um, and just to make sure you're building on the same foundation. And and when I say the same foundation, I don't even necessarily mean like Christian, non-Christian, believer, non-believer, but I even mean like spiritually, like, are we, are we going after the same thing? Like, do we, are, do we have the same aim and like vision for our life? Like if I'm, if my goal is to finish the race and tell as many people about Jesus as I possibly can, if your goal is to make a lot of money and retire early and like, just like live it up and live a comfortable Christian life, like we're on two totally different pages here. Um, and so for me, it's even evaluating that. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. Actually, you're bringing up like the, the main last thing I wanted to ask you, which I actually think is a little controversial, but it's true. Like, so you talked about in your book that with Grant, it was different because ultimately God was the most important center of your relationship. Like you dated all these different ways. You learned truly that God's love was the the number one love that you could ever seek even before dating. And then when you did enter into dating Grant, albeit probably not perfectly, not perfectly ready, like I don't think there is that perfectly ready, but there was something different with him and with your foundation. And so my question for you guys literally is, can God really be the centerfold of your relationship if you're not teachable, if you're not growth minded? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't think so I, I really I don't think so. And and here's why I'd say that. I don't know that God can be God to you if you don't understand your need for him and your own weaknesses and sinfulness apart from him. And so like the whole point of being in a relationship with the Lord is to understand his sovereignty, his power, who he is, and then your need and dependence on him and for him. And so if the whole idea of being a follower of Christ, of being a Christian, um, 
it, it means to look like Christ and to mimic him, to be like him. And so even the idea of like follower of Christ, follow him literally means like one step in front of another. Like it's a, it's a calling. It's not, it's not being stagnant. It's not being lazy. It's not, it's not easy. Um, it is a day by day step by step, like growing, constantly growing. It requires growing. It requires next steps. It requires getting out of your comfort zone. It requires dying to yourself and becoming more like Christ. Um, and those, again, those things are not always easy, but gosh, they're worth it. And it's, it's the most important thing you will ever find here on this earth. And that is why, like, I'm so passionate about this message because I've seen, you know, such a, a, a culture of people who are obsessed with this idea of love and obsessed with this idea of infatuation and lust and, and all like instant gratification. And it's just like, man, I have seen the people I have been around and known people in my life who have had so much money, so much fame, so much success. They have gotten everything they've ever possibly dreamed of. And they were miserable, discontent, empty, unsatisfied, crying themselves to sleep at night, anxious, depressed, you name it. And I have just seen in my life, like truly Jesus is the only one that can satisfy. And he is the only one that will be able to meet every need, every longing, every desire that is in our heart because he's the one that created it. And yeah. so he's the only one that's going to be able to fill it. And so like, I've just seen that, like until that is right, until that is strong, um, and until you're, you're continuously growing in that and every single day pursuing that, um, it's going to be really hard for any other relationship to be strong and thriving and healthy. Yeah. Amen. I mean, mic drop, like <laughs> I can't follow that up. Maddie, that was, <laughs> that was amazing. And I, you know, the, probably the only thing to add is growth mindedness is not for yourself. Growth mindedness is not so you can be more intellectual, more humble, mm -hmm. more awesome of a person. Have cooler Instagram posts. Right. Like <laughs> Growth mindedness exists as a byproduct because you love God so much that you want to grow in your relationship and your fellowship and passion for him. And you'll do anything it takes. That's where it comes from. Yeah. That's what growth minded it is. And I see this kind of like humble growth or this fake humility or fake growth mindedness because ultimately at the end of the day is I want to feel better by myself about mm. being a better human. And no, it's I'm I, I love God so much. I'll do anything in my life to grow in my relationship with him. You know, and as we're talking about like we talked on the pre call about how marriage can be hard sometimes. And like this is a podcast for singles, but I'm just gonna say like if you don't have, if you're not married, if you don't marry someone who's not growth minded, like it's going to be the most torturous marriage of it your is. entire life. Like it, like things come up that you can never imagine. I'm not trying to be that married person right now on a dating podcast, but I just want you guys to really <laughs> know, like, I'm telling you, you don't know what you don't know when it comes to marriage. Like you can prepare all day, all you want, but like it challenges you in ways you will never expect. And if you don't have that growth mindset and if it's not for the Lord, you're going to be super selfish and you might change for a moment for your spouse, but it's not going to be long lasting. Right. You might resent them. Like there's so much that can build up like your growth mindedness needs to be rooted. And I am doing this ultimately for the, for Jesus, for the Lord, because he called me to this marriage into this covenant. And, and I, I don't want to do these things. I don't want to change in these ways. I don't like looking at these things about myself, uh -huh. but I'm going to as painful as it is, because that is what I'm going to do for Jesus, not just for this other person, but I'm going to do that for the Lord to have the strongest marriage possible to honor him. And, um, I just literally don't think you can have a thriving marriage at all without growth mindedness. <laughs> That's so good. I, you you both just spit some bars and I just like had so many thoughts that I just want to say really quick. I know we're like running out of time, but I was just like, man, that's so good and so true. And I'm glad you both said that both the things that you said, because Kate, I was like, man, that I feel like people need to hear that because I think a lot of times we think it'll get better when we get married. And I'm like, that is just so not true. Like if you don't deal with and confront the things in singleness like it doesn't just go away in marriage. Like it doesn't just go away because you find your, your person. Um, one thing I've learned is like, man, my insecurities didn't just go away. My fears didn't just go away. My like 
whatever it may be, trust issues didn't just go away. Like it, it only honestly probably increased. And so like being able to like really confront those things and singleness and figure out the best way, like, okay, Maddie, like when you have a fear, like, what are you going to do? Like when you feel insecure, where, what are you turning to? What are you running to? Um, those are really, really good things to man, really have those conversations and moments with yourself, especially in singleness, because yes, it does not go away in marriage. Um, and then also I wanted to say JJ, that is like so good because like everything here on this earth, it's like, we were made on purpose and for a purpose. And so we were made with intention and with reason. And it's not just for ourselves. We're not here just to take and consume and get all that we can. We were literally put here to give and to reflect, um, Literally, I I like heard this thing one time that was like a moon's like purpose is basically just to like reflect the sun. Like the the moon only has light because it reflects from the sun. And I was like, man, that's kind of crazy. And in the same way, we too should be moons. Like our only purpose is to reflect the light that, that the sun Jesus is <laughs> like, and I just want to encourage anyone listening to like, man, your, your waiting season is not for nothing. Your rejection is not for nothing. Your heartbreaks is not for nothing. Your, all the things you have walked through, like you have walked through it to grow closer to the Lord, but also to encourage other people, um, and to, use your pains and your rejections to help other people through theirs and to make a difference, um, for those around you. And so I just thought that was a really good point. Oh, so good. That's a great recap. Guys, I love this. I love this conversation. I feel fired up right now. I hope you guys right? listeners do too. <laughs> um, Maddie, I'm so excited for you in this book, the love everybody wants, like so much of what you said today, like just hearing your heart and everything you spilled is like only a tidbit of what is in your book and it's so relatable and so easy to read that those are my favorite books where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I literally feel like I know this person and I'm reading this. Like it's like my new best friend and I feel like seen through it, you know? And I think you come at it as like, Hey, I wrote this. I started writing this while single. Like this isn't me writing this book saying, Hey, I'm married now with the ring on my finger. And now read this book about how I thrived (laughs) in my singleness. Like, aren't I awesome? No, you literally wrote it while single saying, uh, okay, I've had a lot of rejections done this, not the right ways. And I'm going to do this a new way and let's wrestle this out. And here's the things I've learned in this book while still being the single girl with a lot of married people. So I just think it's such an amazing thing that you did this. Yeah. I'm so proud no, of I you. I agree. And, and apparently you're best friends with Kate now in her <laughs> mind uh, after reading after your reading book, the book. After reading the book, yes. Um, okay. Here's the fun question to end on. And if you have a better one, let me know. But I think at one point in time we all had like red flags that we thought were red flags that in retrospect we're just like man that was so shallow of us or totally not a red flag what was a red flag for you maybe when you were 22 23 (laughs) that you look back now and you just laugh at (laughs) that's a good question thank you is it a good one gosh that is a really good question I mean, okay, red flags. I don't know if I would say like it it was a red flag as much as probably just like on my list of things that I just like wanted. Um, I would say I would say probably someone who a guy who is tall and athletic. <laughs> I would say tall and athletic. It was like pretty much a non-negotiable for me. And then I finally like surrendered it. And, you know, by the grace of God, Grant is tall and athletic. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's hysterical. So it worked out. But yeah. But you surrendered at first, which I love. Yeah, I think. I did. I did. One of mine was definitely that the guy could sing really well and could serenade me oh, um, with like amazing love songs that he wrote for me. And um, I have to admit that JJ might have one of the worst singing voices I've yeah. ever heard. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, babe. That was oh like, my I know. And JJ <laughs> sings in church some, when I can hear him. I'm like chuckling sometimes because <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, it's so good. But... He's going to be so self-conscious no, now. No, <laughs> I mean, in the spirit of humility, I have one of the worst singing voices I've ever That's heard. amazing. Honestly, so does Grant. Y'all can just have your own little bad singing <laughs> We can serenade you guys together and you can. Go, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love that what about you babe did you have any red flags that... oh here's one um 
for me, honestly, if a girl took a, like a lot of selfies and had selfies <laughs> as her profile pictures and was just obsessive with selfies, I was like, dude, that's a red flag. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, if she only posts <laughs> selfies, but I actually like a good selfie. I mean, I like him too, but Kate's like, wait. I <laughs> yeah. Hey, after your last comment, all right? I have a little. Well, I don't really you. take just solo <laughs> selfies all the time. I do solo group selfies. Like, okay, with yeah, you. that's okay. different. Okay. But yeah, okay. like the uh, the selfie girl who's just obsessed with her selfies. Uh, there, specifically, if she like works up the the nerve to put him as her profile picture. I was like, that's a red flag for me. I <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. I said that out loud one time. I didn't know who's in the group. And some girl was like, well, I have a selfie as my profile picture. <laughs> oh no. I was like, <laughs> she immediately goes and changes it really yeah. quick. Yeah, I was like, well, not for you. Uh, you, you're, you know, you're okay. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're, 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 you're all right, girl. You're, you're the exception. I'm yeah. So embarrassing. <laughs> I love it. All right, Maddie. Well, thank you so much. We can't wait for our, our double date. I can't wait to hang out oh, with Grant. Can't wait. Like, the I know, way you describe seriously. him, I'm like fantasizing about him in my head. Oh my god! <laughs> I gotta stop. That's a red flag. Okay? Oh my god! <laughs> you guys can make up songs and sing them to me and Maddie, okay? Okay. <laughs> and we'll we'll pretend that you have the best voices of all time. You guys might need to wear some like earplugs or something because <laughs> it's gonna be bad. We'll come to you guys because it's 110 degrees here. Yeah. So How about that? We'll come that to California. Great. We'll go to the beach. Yeah. Well, we love you, girl, and um. Can't wait for all of our people to get your book, The Love Everybody Wants, because it's so good. <laughs> so Thank proud of you. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. We love you. The Heart of Dating podcast is created by Kate and JJ Tomlin. Shout out to our epic audio and video editor, Scott Caro. We have an amazing Heart of Dating team who helps bring the show to you each week. I want to shout out Kelsey Napier, our Heart of Dating Digital Marketing Coordinator, and Elena Gibson, our Brand and Community Manager. We couldn't do it without them. Now, if you guys have never ranked us or reviewed us on iTunes or Spotify, would you consider doing that? It would mean so much because our podcast can get more discovered and more people can learn how to better date as Christians. Don't we all want that? We launch our podcast each and every week on Wednesdays. So we will see you next week.